In the aftermath of the terrorist attacks in San Bernardino and Paris, President Obama held a rare Oval Office address to the nation Sunday night, but almost immediately his speech was criticized as being short on details, long on promises. Joining me from Santa Ana is Representative Loretta Sanchez, Democrat of California, senior member of both the Armed Services and Homeland Security Committees, and she's also seeking the Democratic Senate nomination in the race to succeed the retiring Senator Barbara Boxer. All right, Congresswoman, what's your reaction to the Obama address? Well, I believe the president has calmed the American people. He has um, cited several things we need to do. One, we need to destroy ISIS, ISIL, Dash, whatever you want to call them. Uh, secondly, uh, we need to put our resources in place to ensure we continue to protect Americans and America. And third, he understands that it requires our regional uh, members there in the Middle East to help us, other countries, um, some of whom have not stepped up to the plate, if you will. And of course, he acknowledged that while Americans uh, may have some fear, they have to understand this is the land of the free and the brave, and um, that we shouldn't look at people in a one dimension uh, way. In other words, this is not against all Muslims. This is not about Muslims in our country. Many of them are helping us in this heroic fight against ISIS and ISIL. Do you think that um, uh, things like San Bernardino, Congresswoman, are now the new normal? No, absolutely. And we cannot accept them, Larry, to be the new normal. The fact of the matter is, since 9-11, and I have been on the Homeland Security Committee in the House of Representatives since we created it after 9-11. We have stopped many threats and many potential attacks on this country. We have men and women every single day working hard to look at intelligence, to think about what's going on, to close the loopholes that we have, the gaps where we're missing, and they will continue to do so and they will do it in a, a better and smarter way every single day in order to ensure that we protect Americans and America. But remember, Larry, you cannot get everything all of the time. There will be some things that slip through, but we cannot accept that as the normal for our nation. Explain how Americans who are on the no-fly list can't get on a commercial airliner, but can buy a weapon. Well, again, one of the, thi one of the things that we know about gun laws and some of the registration and background checks, etc., are that it's a patchwork um, of, uh, of laws. Uh, remember that California, for example, has some stronger gun laws than other states. One of the things that we need to do as a Congress, and I know that a lot of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are very hesitant to open up what they believe is a can of worms with respect to uh, laws and guns. But one of the things we need to do is we need to ensure that we close those loopholes that we can agree on. Uh, you know, there are already registration laws on the books. There are background check laws on the books. We need to bring in that terrorism list. We need to bring in that no-fly list. But we need to have, instead of a patchwork, where people can look at the weaknesses in the system and get through the seams, we need to acknowledge that we need to tighten all of that up across all of the United States. And I sincerely hope that my colleagues from both sides of the aisles will say it's time that we ensure we do that. The Second Amendment was written uh, referring to a militia. There's no militia now. Times have changed, haven't they? Look, our Constitution was written, I think, by some founding fathers who um, really had a good ability to project for the future and to guarantee individual rights. And I, and I applaud them for that. Over the years, as things change, as times change, we as a nation have ability to amend that Constitution. But quite honestly, Larry, as it sits today, we have the right to bear arms. So um, there is never a freedom that is given without some sort of regulation to it. Even our First Amendment rights, the ability to, um, to speak freely, 
uh, you know, there are libel laws, there are laws with respect to not yelling fire in a crowded auditorium, these types of things. In the same way, there um, are regulations and or should be regulations with respect to the Second Amendment. But there's a way to change it. If times have changed so much that we have to eliminate it, people know what that is. It would be a constitutional amendment. I don't believe that there is the desire by a majority of Americans to do that at this point. Many on the other side of the aisle are criticizing the president for never saying radical Islamic terrorism. He never says that. Do you think he should? Oh, well, you know, what's in a name? You know, that's always the issue. And according to the types of laws that we have, maybe the president has decided that that's not the way he's going to speak to it. But certainly, uh, we know that there is a, a small group, and we don't know how big that is. It can be anywhere between 5 and 20 percent from the people that I speak to that um, Islam is their religion and who have a, a desire um, for a caliphate and to, to uh, institute that in any way possible, and in particular, go after, after what they consider Western norms, our way of life. They are not content enough to have their way of looking at the world. They want to put their way on everybody in the world. And again, I don't know how big that is, depending on who you talk to, uh, but they're certainly, they are willing to go to extremes. They are willing to use, and they do use terrorism. And it is in the name of a very uh, wrong way of looking at Islam. I don't fault the president uh, on his verbiage. I want him to uh, understand and to, to go after this uh, ISIL, ISIS, Dao state that that people are trying to form because it's going after us. Do you think we can really wipe them out? We must. It's no, it's no longer, we have seen this, it's no longer a matter of containing. It is a matter of eliminating that threat to America, to Americans, and to the peace-loving world that the majority of human beings on this planet are. Congressman Sanchez, always good talking to you. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, Larry.